Welcome back. Let's study static and class methods, if you'd like. I mark this as optional because it's rather advanced concept that a lot of people don't ever use. But you might. And if you come from an object-oriented language that has such facilities, you'll be glad to know they're here in Python. First, we'll take a look at static.py, which is something we've seen before. Nothing new to learn here, but just to remember how the concept of static in the C or C++ sense of the word is accomplished with just a class attribute. We have a class static. It has a class level attribute that keeps track of the number of static instances that have been made. Every time the initializer is run, it adds one to that static dot number. Now this, line 11, says that we're going to put a number also into the self, and that will be the number right now that is the static number. Whenever we make a string for our object, we will see its self number and what the static dot number is at this moment. And we're making three static objects, and then we're joining up the string of each of these objects. And we see that when we made the first object, we got the one. Now that's the self. Because we printed after we made all the objects, we see three for the number of total objects. And that's the static dot number. The next one is two and three. So that behaves just as we expect. In static dot two, we are importing the module we just looked at and that class that's in it, static.static. .static. static2 inherits from that. In static2, we have two methods, jump up, which here we have decorated as a class method. So the at class method is a built-in decoration. And that means that the following method, when it is called, and it is called without an object of the class, let's look at the call. Here on line 27, we see our call to jump up. We say the name of the class, that's our static2, and then jump up. And I'm sticking in 100, that gets received here as the number, but what automatically gets received here as a CLS or class is static2. Here, I'm going to print that first, and you see there it is. It is, in fact, in class method jump up, and the class is that static2. If we had child classes of static2, all those child classes could also call jump up, and which class called it would be reflected here in the CLS. So what we do in jump up is this number gets added to the number that's back in the static class definition back in the static.py module. Also, we have a static method, another decorator, which means this is static method. Now, in my static method, I don't have any arguments whatsoever because nothing is automatically put into the argument list. So I like it to be dramatic and show you that nothing is automatic, no self, no class. And what I do then, when this does get called, is I go back to that number that's in that static class, that's in that static.py, and I set it back to zero. Start over. In our testing, here we're making three objects of static2. Well, static2 does not have a magic initializer, so it gets initialized back in that static. And when we print out those three objects, just like in the static.py, we see 1 of 3, 2 of 3, 3 of 3. Now then, we're going to call our static2.startover. That's going to go into here with nothing. And we're putting that number back to 0, back there in that static class. Here then, we're making three more objects of the static2 class, and we're going to comma join all six objects, their strings. 
So we see that we still have one of three, two of three, three of three, but then we start it over, so we have another one of three, two of three, and three of three. We're going to do jump up of a hundred. That comes in here. This class is, in fact, the static two class. And we'll see that reflected in this print. And then the number gets bumped up by that hundred that came in. Once again, we make three more objects, realizing that the number at this point is 103, because it was three, and then we added 100. So we make three more objects that will end up with the static classes number being 106. And yes, here it is, 106. Then there will be the next three objects that we saw above it, but now they're of 106. And the next three objects then start with 104 because it was 103. The static number was 103. Now it's 104, 5, and 6. So that demonstrates to you these two class methods that do not need an object to call. People use this to initialize something for the whole class, all the objects of a class, for example. I could be keeping an exchange rate and every day go to the internet and find today's exchange rate or every hour, whatever I want to do. So that's what it's good for. Okay, that's it for this lab, not much. But the exercise is significant, but I hope you find it a lot of fun and learn a lot. I'll see you when you're ready to look at the solution.